Hey everybody, in the previous video we created a new space and placed this reference image to help draw the floor plan. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out before watching this one. In this video we'll cover how to add a wall and some of the different properties of walls you'll want to be aware of. To add a wall, you'll hold down Control and click and drag. So let's add one here at the screen wall. Now there's lots of to cover information-wise for walls, so I want to point you to the tips and tricks section for explanations and controls. For this video, I'll be covering the handles and inputs, context menu, and reference edge. Okay, first are the handles and inputs. To cover this, I'm first going to add a couple extra walls that will help better demonstrate these points. So I'll add one on each side just as the reference image shows, one here and one here. Notice that when a wall is selected, there are three different circular, circular handles, one on each end and one in the middle. These are used to move the walls, resize them, or input certain measurements and angles that appear blue. Let's zoom in and take a closer look using the mouse wheel, and then pan using the right mouse to center the wall. Okay, so if I were to grab either of these end handles, I can drag to resize the wall like this. I can also grab and drag the center handle to move the wall perpendicular to itself. Now you may have noticed as I've been selecting these handles, certain measurements and angles have turned blue. Blue measurements and angles accept input. So for example, with this middle handle selected, I can click this blue measurement and enter something like three feet, which will move the selected handle out. The same applies to angles. So if I select this handle, Inputting an angle will move that handle to create the angle. Okay, the second thing to cover in regards to walls is the context menu. If you right click on a wall, you'll get a list of options to choose from. These are edit wall thickness, delete wall, split wall, which creates a cut in the wall, or straighten the wall. The other place you will find options is right clicking at a joint like where these two walls meet. This will provide a couple additional options like break joint, which separates the walls like this, or merge joint, which would combine the two walls together like this. The last thing I want to cover on walls is the reference edge. Basically, the reference edge, which is a solid blue line on a wall, maintains the wall's desired length, especially on mitered corners. You can think of it as sort of a guide where you'll want to keep this line on the same side of the wall as a real world measured wall. So let me show you a few examples of how this works. Let's first delete these two walls, okay? This wall is currently drawn on top of the reference edge. I can actually flip that by selecting it and pressing the space bar. One of the things I mentioned is that the reference edge maintains a wall's desired length. So let's actually add a wall and see how it affects this length. First, take note of the wall's length. When I add a wall to it here, the walls now create a mitered corner. Notice though that the reference edge maintained its length while the other side changed. This is why you'd want to keep the reference edge on the same side as a real world measured wall. So for this particular room, I'd want to keep the reference edge on the inside of my walls because those are the measurements I know and the ones I want to be maintained. Okay, that was a lot that we covered on the wall. Again, you can always refer to the tips and tricks section for any refreshers you may need. In the next video, we'll be drawing out the rest of the room and going over some of the final features available to you in the floor plan editor.